Mad Avengers here, and today I have a selection of Switch openers I'd like to talk about. Which one's worth it? Which one do I use? Which one should you get? And are they worth your consideration? Before I answer those questions, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Novel Keys. Rush over to Novel Keys to join the group buys for the Gatoron Glow Switches as well as the Godspeed Glow Desk Pads. The Gatoron Glow Switches are a linear Gatoron switch with an awesome glow in the dark top housing. I'm definitely planning a pretty cool build with these that you guys will see hopefully pretty soon once I get some samples in hand. They're also hosting the group buy for the Godspeed Glow Desk Pads, which are awesome Godspeed themed desk pads illuminated with fiber optic stitchings on the edges, so you can bring the Godspeed theme even stronger to your setup. Finally, check out the Yawk Red Panda Switches, which are in stock now. If you missed out on the Panda Switches or you missed out on the Jesus Switches, this is another of the same switch in its own unique red color. I love these switches and what they mean for the modding community. I highly recommend you check out these switches if you're thinking of doing a build anytime soon or if you're thinking of doing something awesome like making holy pandas. If you're going to be shopping at Novel Keys, you should use my January promo code MANNY, M-A-N-N-Y, for 5% off your order. Check out Novel Keys through the link in the description down below. So, switch openers. In front of me, I have a few switch opening tools. I have the Nutcrackers by Tianyu Labs, the Keyboss switch opener, uh, MechanicalKeyboards.com switch tools, and the switch cracker and a screwdriver. Hold up. No. Okay, let's start with the Nutcrackers. The Nutcrackers by Tianyu Labs come in both MX and KO flavors. They are aluminum and even come in different anodized colors depending on which one you order. Right now, these are in between group buys, but hopefully this video will help you decide if you want to pick up one the next time they run. Next up is the Switch Keyboss Key Opener. I've probably had the most use out of this since I got it months and months ago and I absolutely love it and highly recommend it. It feels good in the hand and gets the job done for all Cherry style switches, regardless of if it's a clone or actual Cherry MX. I really, really love it. You guys have probably seen it a ton of times in my build videos and in the past as well. Next up are the MX Switch Top Removal Tools by MechanicalKeyboards.com. I've probably had these the longest of all my switch opening tools since they came out before the rest of them did. These are the only ones of all the ones that I have that will be able to work with switches that are soldered into a switch top removable plate, which is really cool and really awesome if you've already soldered your board in, but the plate allows you to remove the top, so you can modify it how you'd like. For kale switches, your most economical choice is what you should already have, a simple flathead screwdriver. Honestly, I still use this in a pinch because one is always in reach and it's super easy to open up switches with one. The other option is the Kale Latch Nutcracker by Tianyu, which gets the job done pretty well. Honestly, it works way better than I thought, and I'm gonna have a lot of use for this moving forward. Let's head to the desk to try these out. Okay, so let's try out some different switch opening tools I have in front of me with some different kinds of switches. So there's gonna be two camps, MX style camp and Kale latch style. So these go here, these go here, this goes here, this can go in both, I'm gonna put it here, and this, what, what, what are you doing here? I threw you a ray already. Okay, let's uh, let's get back to this because this is this is where we're at today. Uh, most excitedly, uh, these Nutcrackers, which I got recently, all the way from uh, Gold China from TL Labs. So I got a few different kinds of switches in front of me, and I'll, I'll walk walk you through all of them. First, classic cherry top, cherry bottom, uh, with the Nutcracker. You just put the switch in like this, with the north and south facing the two individual single pegs. And then the four latches in the side align up with the side, push it down, nice and easy. 
bottom comes out pretty easily as well. I like that, that worked out pretty well. How about the key boss switch opener? Also very, very easily. I'm quite used to this. I've been using this for the majority of my time. Last but not least is the switch opening tools from mechanicalkeyboards.com. So the main advantage of these tools is you can take off switch tops from keyboards that have switch top removable plates. So you put both of them in, apply a little bit of pressure, and that opens nice and easy. Either you can do this in your hand like this, or you can do it when it's already mounted, if the plate supports it. That's a big if. So that was cherry. That worked out pretty easily. Now let's try something more, a little more difficult. This is gonna be a Temu top and bottom, specifically the Sky top and bottom. Okay, so first let's try with the new Nutcracker. And already it doesn't even fit. Does it fit? Does it fit? Just can't get that to fit and line up. So I'm gonna say it does not work. Oh, does it work here? Ugh, very difficult. I'm saying no, because now I can worry about not being able to take it off. Okay, how about the key boss? Does it fit in the key boss? Yes, it does. It is a bit tough, but it does fit in the key boss. Does it work with the switch openers? Uh, yes. Yes, it does. There we go. Nice and easy. So, something with the switch openers I forgot to mention is they actually work two ways to work on the tops. They also work on the bottom. You just line up with the... Okay, they, won't work, they don't work on the bottom of the Atemus that well, or do they? They do, in fact. One on each side, and you can pry the tabs up. Would we'll not recommend. I'll do it on Cherry, just to demonstrate how easy it is. It can be. One... Two. There you go. So it looks like a Temu housings are different spec. Looks a bit bigger, so they're much more difficult. Let's move on and try. This is an authentic Panda um, top and bottom housing, manufactured by uh, B Sun, of course. So all the clones should be the same spec, so if it works here, it should work with the clones as well, including the Jesus and the Yawk Red Panda Switch. So onto this. That was super easy. On the Nutcracker. How about the Key Boss? A little bit harder, but still actually very easy. And not, not le last but not least, that's right, these don't fit on top. Not really. So for the MX Switch tool, you're going to use it on the bottoms, which they work fine for the bottoms. One and two. Nice and easy. Sorry, there's Giorgio in the background doing his thing. Let's turn this back around, face the correct way. Awesome. Next, let's try... Next, I have three examples. Okay, these are all, all manufactured by Gatoron. They all should work the same, but... Slight differences. First is a Helio, which is the Gatoron clear top bottom, and... I know Zeal has revised the tops, so they're going to be a bit different to reduce wobble. So I want to try one of these. I have a Gatoron with milky top, milky bottom, and a Gatoron with clear top, black bottom. I know I could do, technically there's still more combinations, but I think this is fine enough. So, for the Helios, let's just, this, oh, did not open. Okay, it looks like it's having some issues with the separation for this. Huh. Okay, not effective. How about with the key boss? Key boss, effective. Very nice and easy. <clears throat> and then for the MK.com switch tool, it works pretty easy as well. And from the bottom, yep, pretty easy as well. 
Let's see if it works easier here now that it's stretched out. Yep, okay, now it works here. Interesting. Had to be stretched out first. So to verify this, let me grab another Gatoron switch and see how it fares. This is another brand new, brand new Helio straight from the bag. Okay, there we go. It works now. It looks like the first one was might have been just a fluke. But one more brand new one. Okay, now we are we are in fact good. Okay, it looks like the first one was just not cooperating. So it works really well for the Gator for Gatoron Zeal switches. How about the um, all milky? Nice and easy. Come on. Oh, it looks like it does take a little bit of force to get it out. How about the key boss switch opener? Also nice and easy. Yay. Moving on next. Um, MK.com switch tools, which I mean, I already know these work. They're just a bit of a pain sometimes to work from the top or bottom. But the big advantage of these ones compared to the other two is they work for switches already mounted on a switch top compatible plate. Nice and easy. Okay, moving on is Gidron Clear Top Black Bottom. Um, let's go to Nutcracker. Does seem stiff. Like with the other clear top. Hmm. Huh. Yes, that seems very stiff uh, indeed. Where? There we go. I have to push it a little harder down. But looks like the downside is because I push it a little harder down, a little bit tougher to remove. But overall, not not too bad. Why did I choose an Aristotle stem for this? Makes it so much harder. Push the stem down and reassemble the switch. Trying not to kill the leaf here. Okay, next up is Key Boss Switch Opener, which of course is always nice and easy. Last but not least, we're gonna get to CamelKeyboard.com switch shop opening tool from the top. Nice and easy. And from the bottom. Also nice and easy. So, all of these work pretty, pretty well for any kind of switch that you might care to open for the most part. Um, pros and cons of each. This is the most expensive one. It looks the nicest. It feels the nicest. Even comes with a case, which is really, really cool. Yeah, it's aesthetic, but it works really well. Next up, Key Boss. Uh, this one, not too bad. Uh, personally, I like this a lot. It just feels good to hold. It feels pretty good, but I might replace it with this. This is, seems to be easier to hold my hand without, you know, crunching my hands as small to hold it for repeated use. We'll see. I'll probably switch between both of these, and after a while, I'll gather more and more opinions. I mean, I do have a whole batch of Helios to open and lube for a Zephyr build coming soon. Hint, hint. Last but not least, I will always have these on hand because you never know when you build a keyboard that has switch top removable plate. It's sometimes it's good to revisit an old switch and maybe redo lube if you want, or try different lube, or mix things up if you want a stem swap, uh, or something else without needing to desolder if that is applicable. So I will always have these handy laying around, but for primary use, it's going to be one of these two for sure, for sure. Now let's move on to the Kale Latch style, in which two main competitors, the classic 
flathead method, which you just flathead under one, and then you do a flathead under the other one, and lift, and nice and easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, that's going to be going against this one, which all you do apparently is this, you just, that was really easy, wow, that was way easier actually. Um, so I guess for Kale Switches, I'm going to be doing this, this guy. Let's take one more time to assemble the switch then, unclip it. Let's try it again, nice little, these aren't like sharp or anything, but they definitely get the job between for separating the latch. But yeah, barely didn't even need to apply force either. So this is an automatic winner if you need to take part kale switches. That's my little overview for uh, switch openers. How do you guys open your switches? What do you guys prefer? What tools do you guys use? Um, I'm not a big fan of the 3D printed tools. Um, 3D printed tools, in my experience, have a uh, higher failure rate. I've had definitely reports of people in the past having theirs wear out over a few hundred switches. And if it's going to wear out over a few hundred switches, I'd rather spend the investment in aluminum ones where they're not going to wear out on a few hundred switches and they'll just keep opening switches. Mmm, that sound. Personally, I open MX switches the most, so I'll be using one of these two all the time. Whichever one is most handy that I can grab. Um, I definitely like this one. It looks great. It comes with a nice little can carrying case that I never use because it smells really bad. Oh my goodness, it smells bad. I don't know why I did that. And it's been airing for like a week almost. Kale switches, this is the hands down winner we'll use every single time. And these, always great to have around, but if you're not in the US, shipping is really, really bad. So keep that in mind. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this little bit of an overview of opening switches and which one might be the best for you. Let me know down in the comments which one you like the most and which one do you currently use. Feel free to link it in the comments so other people can get some ideas. I'll link all of these ones in the description if you guys are curious to see where you guys can get these. Uh, the two I'd recommend most, of course, are is the uh, TL Labs Nutcrackers. I'm not sure if you can still grab these because these were for a small group buy. If not, I'd highly recommend the Keyboss uh, Switch Opener, which I'll have a link in the description below. Same with these MechanicalKeyboards.com uh, Switch Openers. If you do have a friend in the US who can proxy it for you, you might save a lot on shipping because MK.com uh, charges an arm and leg for shipping for some reason. And for kale switches, you saw how easy it was for me to use with the flathead for the latch style. So if you're here to save a buck, do this. If you can grab one, then grab a kale nutcracker because these work amazing. At a very, very last resort, you can try the uh, 3D printed ones. Not a big fan, as you can uh, probably tell from me uh, tossing them. Um, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care.